Hello, welcome to the video. I'm Nick Dyer from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and today I'm joined by Kev Ridings. Yeah, Kevin Ridings, Beam Software. And what we're going to be going through today in the session is about leveraging data, putting your backup data to work, delivering more value from the data set that you've created. So on the screen here, we've drawn um, a typical 3 2, one technology, which we described in one of our other videos. And here we have a, a nimble or flash array, we have a nimble hybrid flash array, and a store ones platform. We've drawn some compute, we've drawn some VMs with a backup job assigned to it, with Veeam backup and recovery, we've got some proxies, and the repositories are already pre-drawn on the screen. The reason why we're discussing nimble storage here today is primarily because it's a very advanced platform with deep integrations with Veeam software. Some of the really cool things that Nimble can do with Veeam are leveraging Nimble snapshots and Nimble restore technologies to augment Veeam's very clever technologies with things such as data labs. So on the Nimble platforms here, we've drawn some volumes and we've drawn some snapshots. Now, one of the big things about Nimble is that all of our data services have no licenses. There is all encompassing within the platform. And a Nimble array, either all flash or hybrid, can take upwards of 190,000 snapshots with no performance overhead whatsoever assigned to them. Because of that, you can start using snapshots to complement your backups. They do not replace your backups, they absolutely complement them. So rather than having to reach for a 24-hour based restore, you can reach for an hourly based restore or even half hourly should you wish. The important thing is it has no performance overhead to your platform whatsoever. So you can see here, we've got, a, uh, we've got a, a, an object here with some snapshots. We've got a nimble hybrid here, which would be a lower uh, and a better cost per gigabyte. And we've got longer term retention here. And then we've got a store once device here, which would be our archive layer in a three, two, one scenario. So Kev, would you mind taking us through some of the uh, processes and procedures behind this, please? Sure, thanks, Nick. So it would all be orchestrated and controlled from within Veeam Backup Replication that you can see in the center here. So we've already created the job targeting the VMs that we wish to protect. So as we went through in a previous video, we can go in guest and, and quiesce all the applications and truncate logs and, and get, get that VM ready for that backup state. We still need to take a uh, hypervisor-based snapshot, but we are controlling the nimble snapshot technology as well. So we're creating uh, fully application consistent snapshots down here. And that's an important point, right? So you are not managing the array to do the snapshots. You're not using any of the nimble management tools. It's all being managed through Veeam Backup and Recovery. Which is obviously a great central place to control multiple pieces of storage. And, and again, just to get that full application consistency. So once we do have the application consistency down in the snapshots, um, they can be and, and should be replicated to a secondary um, nimble array. And also with perhaps the use of a backup copy job, or if we're doing a backup as well as just orchestrating the snapshots, take them across to perhaps a store once device. So you, so you would see, a, a, so you'd see repositories for both the secondary array as well as the store ones device as well. Absolutely. They, be, they would be re represented within Veeam back and, re and replication. And the great thing, if we talk about restores just for a second, a restore operator can recover from either a primary snap on the primary device, a snapshot on the secondary device, or perhaps from a backup without really understanding how the snapshot technology mounting of those actually works. It turns that restore into an IT generalist task from it be a snapshot or a backup. So it really simplifies that process. So for example, you could take 30 days worth of primary storage based snapshots. You wouldn't keep more than that, I guess, primarily because your cost per gig of all flash is, you know, is all flash. You could then take maybe a year worth on your secondary storage array because your cost per gig is, is really good there. And then if you needed to, you could then go to seven years plus on a store once platform because it's very highly dedupable and the cost per gig of this is fabulous. So you've now got different retention points, but as you mentioned, as an IT generalist, you've got one thing to manage in one place to restore. Yeah, it's all about points in time within Veeam. You pick the relevant point in time, whether that's from a snap, a secondary snap, or a backup, just as easy to use. And, and that really takes me on to the leveraging the data piece. So we can leverage data out of primary, secondary, or perhaps backup data sets. And what we can actually do, we have data labs. 
So we, we have a number of features which we'll go through now. So if you're wanting to deliver more value to your data, it's not just that insurance policy. We have the ability to mount virtual machines out of primary, secondary, or backups into an isolated virtual network. And this is doing flash-based mounts and flash-based restores. So typically with backups, it can be a bit slow and it could be a bit cumbersome. But because it's nimble, you've got ultra-quick technology for restore points in time for your snapshot data. Absolutely. Bringing the points in time back from primary and secondary would give you near production level performance within this isolated network. Coming from a much longer term retention, you perhaps would get sub-production level performance, but you'd be looking at a much longer term retention there. Once we have them mounted and, and streamed, perhaps if we're coming from the backup using our vPower technology, in this isolated virtual network, we can interact with them. And the first thing we would do is actually run our Shore backup process. So in an earlier video, we talked about the 3210. Three copies of your data, two different media types, one in a different location, and the zero being zero errors guaranteed across that. So we would bring and, and, and mount the virtual machines, the virtual workloads into the isolated network. We'd then run verification technology to prove that the virtual machine layer is good. So we'd wait for a heartbeat perhaps from tools we would be able to ping the OS, so it would prove that the OS is in fact booted and, uh, and, and functional. But truly where the value is, we can test that the application is in fact functional. So we can look for a get from a HTTP server, we could perhaps pull some table data from SQL. Whatever gives you that green light of service across your application stack, we can test for. We then drop you a nice email that we've tested it to that layer, and then we can do a number of different things. We can now leave those workloads mounted and interact with them. We interact with them via our virtual lab proxy. So that allows uh, ingress of data, but of course no egress because they are copies of your production workloads. So that, that's not something you would want to happen. The use cases for mounting these workloads in a data lab and keeping them running could be test and dev. You're wanting to validate, you wanted to test an application. Perhaps you're wanting to perform a software upgrade, a software upgrade test. Or perhaps you're wanting to do some data mining within a particular application. These are, in fact, addressable from the production network. There are some advanced features within Data Labs that we brought out within the last update around secure restore and staged restore. So the options around staged restore, that gives you the ability to perform a recovery from snapshot, primary or secondary, or from backup into the isolated network and then perform some activity on that particular workload. So perhaps in a GDPR use case, you're wanting to perform a recovery of a SQL server. But that SQL server has some personally identifiable information that was, was forgotten 10 days ago. You can then bring that into the data lab. You can then run some removal of data scripts to remove the should have been forgotten data forget that data, and then proceed to recover that into production. There are some other options around uh, data labs, but that's not something we're going to go too deep into today. Yeah, so that's a very powerful workflow, especially for GDPR compliance. And it's all because you've got this flash-based power technology underneath. The data labs technology and the restore technology and sure backups typically is very cumbersome if you do not have high performance storage below it. So if you're using nearline SAS drives, or if you're using like a server with a load of drives in, you tend not to get, be able to do this kind of work because it's nimble, because the snapshots have no performance overhead, and because it's flash accelerated, you get all of this deep integration, and nimble doesn't charge for this. It's all built into the platform. The final thing on this is that within Veeam Backup and Recovery, it can do single object restores. So it can mount a nimble snap no matter where that is, and you can then dive into that and restore a virtual machine, Active Directory, it can do Oracle, it can do Exchange, it can do SQL, it can go, it can go on like that. Again, all integrated into Nimble Snaps. And if you install Veeam after you've got loads of snapshots on a Nimble array, it can restore from them as well. 
absolutely, which I think is a, a really great feature. Snapshots that are created before Veeam was even around in the environment. We can mount them, we can scan them, and perform all our different types of recoveries from a really, really very powerful feature. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for joining us today. I, we do hope you find the video useful. Um, please do check out the other videos in the series. We'll make sure we link them in the description box below. But for now, from me and for Kevin, thank you for watching and have a great day. Thank you.